first impressions of Svelte, it's pretty freaking cool. Let's talk about it. So Svelte is a client-side JavaScript framework, similar to React or Vue or Angular or whatever. It is a way for us to build our front ends as single page apps. Now, Svelte also has associated with it Svelte Kit. Svelte Kit is another project by the Svelte team, which is very similar to Next.js, Nux.js, etc. It is a full meta framework or full stack framework, whatever you want to call it, that gives us access to some of the really important features that you need to build production grade web apps today. It'll give you stuff like server-side render, It'll give you stuff like a built-in router. It'll give you a bunch of different things which are super important and will help make your web apps a lot better. So I would highly recommend if you really do get into Svelte, go use SvelteKit. If you do have a use case for a single page app, then you know you already know that and you can do the single page app side of things. But typically speaking, I would go with the full meta framework of SvelteKit. So before we get into my first thoughts on Svelte, how it feels, how it compares to React, etc., I first want to go into why I'm actually doing this. Why are we bothering? with Svelte, why am I trying this out? And the reason for that is because I am personally deep in R&D right now on a bunch of different projects. I'm about to start up some new stuffs to get some MVPs built out and I wanna make sure that I'm using the right web framework and I wanna learn something new. So I looked at all the different options and ultimately decided that Svelte seemed like the most promising one. The syntax looks amazing, the performance looks great, and the fact that it doesn't have a virtual DOM is a huge thing for me. Now that's a pretty niche use case because a lot of people don't need, don't care that React has a virtual DOM. They've never even heard that, they don't care. But for me it does matter because a lot of my apps and sites use this package called D3. If you go to my site Insider Viz, you can see all those different graphs. Those were actually created using the D3 package, which does a bunch of DOM manipulation. We latch onto DOM objects and mess with them, but when you're doing that in React, that gets really tricky. So you kind of have to play this game of escape the React reconciler or else it'll screw up all your front end code. And it's a huge pain, it's quite annoying, but you know, we made it work because Next.js is the standard and it is, you know, generally speaking the best. So that's why I'm actually learning Svelte and obviously then the question becomes, is this better than React? And hopefully I'll be able to give you a semi answer at the end, but the tilter of it is sort of, obviously. So let's get into a demo of Svelte. This is a really basic demo I built out in Svelte. It's a to-do app, the code is down, the code is provided down below. Obviously this is all open source and I'm actually gonna build on this over the next couple weeks as I've been working with Go a lot and doing a bunch of stuff there. We're gonna be implementing custom Go authentication, a Go fiber backend, which is gonna actually save these to-dos and populate them in. We're gonna do all of that on the server. We're gonna mess with edge data fetching and a bunch of different really cool stuff. So this is gonna be an ongoing series over the next couple of weeks. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe, like this video, stay up to date because we're gonna be doing some really cool stuff with this. But for today, it's just a to-do app. You've seen this a million times. If you wanna go see the code, you can, but you know, it's a to-do app and again if you want to learn Svelte I highly recommend the Svelte docs I know I know I mentioned that before but it's really good and it's really worth your time so all we're doing right here is we're completing we can complete stuff it'll check it off we can uncomplete it we can delete these to-dos and it's got that cool little animation which I'll talk about later then we can add a test blah 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 throw this in here and then add the to-do I haven't actually implemented the color functionality because I'm an idiot I'll go ahead and do that right now and there we go. Color is implemented. It actually makes sense now. I completely forgot about that when I put this together last night. So let's take a look at the code here. The code for this app is honestly quite basic. So if you're familiar with React, you can kind of get the mental idea of how would we have done this in React? We would have set up the use state hook. We would have gone through and we would have added um, on-click events to all of the different buttons. We would have done a bunch of state manipulation stuff. And we're doing the same thing here in Svelte, but the syntax on it is really nice. So if we look up here, this is is the script section. So in a React component, this would be the stuff at the top of the functional component before the return. So all we have in here is we have this page data, which I'll get to in a moment, but then down here, our actual state of our app is literally just variables. It is so much more intuitive and a lot nicer to work with than the use state hook when in React, where you have to have, you have a getter and a setter basically in there. And that's the only way you can mani manipulate state here versus here, I can literally just set color equals whatever I want want and then color will be equal to whatever I want wherever I want and it's a really nice way of doing things and if we go down into the actual app itself we can see in here within the actual form itself so I have this form down here which is what will create the to-do 
I'm binding these values to those parameters up at the top. So I'm binding value to title and then that will set title whenever I change the input field and all this different stuff. So Svelte has built in some really useful stuff for inputs, selects, options, all these different things. Again, if you want more information, go do the Svelte tutorial. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. So that's what we're doing right here. We're setting up the values here. And then for the to-dos themselves, we're just setting them to be equal to this data variable right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and print them out using an each. So this would be similar to in React, you would just run a map function and then iterate them out. Again, you can do the same things here that you can in React. It's just the syntax looks a little, the syntax looks a little different. And frankly, I think it's a little nicer. So Right here, we're just going through, we're printing out all these different divs. I'm styling with them, them with Tailwind. Again, this is nothing you probably haven't seen before, but the difference here is the Svelte syntax and the Svelte syntax is really nice. So let's talk about the two features that I'm using here that are unique to Svelte and that are very different from what we get in React. So first of all, Svelte has this really cool feature, which is, you know, it it seems like it'd be kind of a silly extra feature that's not actually useful. It's animations and transitions. Those are a core part of Svelte and they're built in. Now, obviously you can do that in React using a library like Frame or Motion or something like that. You can easily import packages to animate your React apps and do a bunch of different stuff here, there, but in Svelte, it's built in. So on this div right here, I have this in directive and this out directive. And what I'm doing here is I'm attaching fly, which I've imported from Svelte transitions. And then I'm telling it that I want it to fly from the X direction from 50 and take it a duration of a thousand milliseconds. So when we look over here at the actual app itself and I say new to do, and then we'll just put in a fake thing. And then yeah, let's make this one blue. I hit add to do, it's gonna fly in from the side there. So we've got this animation so that when our UIs are updating and we're changing things, Things, which is a very common thing that you do in a web app, you can very trivially animate these things and you can make custom animations and it's super, super easy. Again, they get more into detail in the docs, go read those, but for this example, I hit delete and it fades away. And it's a little thing, but it makes the app feel so much nicer. This is a stupid UI designed by me, which means it's gonna look terrible because I am not a designer. But this looks and feels nice to use because of these transitions. These transitions make a difference and they're built into Svelte. So I thought that was a really cool feature and something that would make this a really pleasant framework to build with. And you can make some really great UIs with this. So you now if I wanted to change the in duration to 5,000, that would go ahead and we would do this, this, and then red, and then it'll take five seconds to fly in. So you can customize these however you want, and it's really cool. So that was one feature that I was really impressed with. And then the other is a Svelte Kit feature. So remember earlier when I said there is Svelte and there is Svelte Kit. Svelte Kit is the full meta framework, which has the server and the edge routes and the router and all this different stuff. Svelte Kit uses file-based routing, not too dissimilar from the new next 13 heavy file based routing stuff, which I'll cover in another video at some point, probably. But SvelteKit does this in a similar way, and it has layouts and pages and server pages and all these different things. This is not a tutorial on this. The docs have will explain it better than I will. But the gist of what I'm doing here is within this routes directory, I have my plus page.svelte file right here. So this page.svelte is what's actually being sent out to the end user and is this actual page. So it's the root page on my local host here. Then I have this layout.svelte, which is very similar to a... Um, well, it's the same thing as a layout if you're familiar with it in Next.js, where basically this is something that is inherited by all of the children of this root. So if I go ahead and let's just add a div here and then let's just do a clap. Let's add a div right here and then let's just do h1 hello from layout. And then when we add this in and we go back up here, we can see hello from layout. And it's not gonna have the same background color because it's a parent of the child, which is the page. So this is a place where we could add stuff like generic meta tags, or if for example, we were creating like a dashboard type thing, your side nav could show up here and then you could do some manipulation on you know where you are and that kind of thing in here. So you put your side nav in here. It's a very useful thing and will allow you to build more complex layouts and pages and apps more easily. Now where it gets interesting is this page.ts file. So this page.ts file exports a load function. So if you've ever used Remix or even Next.js's get server-side props, this is very similar to that. It's basically just a way for us to fetch data on page loads. Whenever the page loads, we're gonna fetch this data. And 
right here, this plus page.ts, this can execute either on the client or the server. Now, if I did plus uh, page.server.ts and exported a load, that would always be executed on the server, which is probably what I would end up doing in production because as we'll see when we evolve this app over the coming weeks, make sure you're subscribed for that. What we'll do is we will turn this into an edge route, which will fetch the to-dos from our Go backend, and then we'll load them here, and then they'll send them down to our page.svelte. So here, this page.ts will set all these to-dos, it'll load these to-dos in, and then within page.svelte, I get this data. So I set this data variable to actually load those in. And what's really even cooler about this is Svelte does some really cool type system stuff where right here, we can see I'm just importing the type of page data from the dollar types directory thing, and that's setting the data to have the right type. So now I know that my to-dos are gonna have this structure and I get full type safety on my data. So I went into this uh, page.ts and I added in another property of hello, and then I set it to this, and then we went in here, and then I added hello, and I set it to this. Now we can see if we go back to our page.svelte, we're gonna get errors because we're adding to this array and we're violating the types because it now knows that data should have that on its type. So we get full type safety on our data in our data loading function, which is super helpful, super cool. And with that will also give us a form of server to client type safety. Finally, I want to show you guys the API routes. We have this plus server.ts, which basically is like the plus page.ts, but it will only execute on the server. And within here, I can define get routes or post routes or whatever I want, and basically just use this like a REST API. So here I have this get, and then I'll take in a random parameter, and then I'll either throw an error or send it down based on some condition. So we went up here to slash API, and then hit enter. It'll say the number is too small because we got too small of a number, but if I keep refreshing this, you know, we might get one that's big enough. So very silly example, but it'll give you the idea of if we needed to add some sort of server side events like this or post requests or something like that, we can do that here. So Svelte has all the tools you need to build basically whatever you want. And honestly, I really like this. I like the way these feel. I like the way all this works. The one thing I will say is kind of goofy. This plus page dot Svelte thing, this plus, the plus formatting is kind of goofy. And the, I can definitely see this getting unwieldy when you get a bigger project. Cause imagine if your project has like 17 pages all nested in a different directory. What's well, 17 different page dot Svelte? That's gonna get annoying, but this isn't a unique Svelte problem. This is a we're doing sir, we're doing file system routing problem that Next is gonna have, Remix is gonna like we're every framework is gonna have this problem at this point. And I think we kind of just have to get used to using the directory names instead of using the file names, which is all in all fine. I think that you would get used to this very, very quickly. Um Tailwind incorporates nicely. All this stuff is really, really great. So with all that out of the way, what is my verdict on Svelte? After using Svelte for this brief period and doing everything, obviously there's more work that needs to be done. We're gonna be building this out over the coming weeks and we're gonna really we're gonna really deep dive into this and get a good idea of how this feels. But my first impression is that this is awesome and it feels great to work with. Writing Svelte feels so, so good compared to React. So much less boilerplate, so much quicker, so many new clean features that just make it better. But the problem is Svelte is newer and Svelte does not have the community or the libraries that React does. React, React works because of its community. React works because of its packages. React works because it's the default. It may not be the best in every different way. These different frameworks can outshine it in certain different places, but where React is always gonna win is it's always gonna have the most packages. It's always gonna have the most community support. It's always gonna have the most libraries. And whenever I'm trying to use some external service with Svelte or something like that, it's gonna be harder to actually get those on Svelte. Like a good example of this is say I wanted to use Auth0 as my Auth provider. I don't believe that Svelte, last time I checked, Auth0 did not have a Svelte adapter. Or if you wanna use a bunch of these different, or like Clerk or something, I don't think that they have a Svelte adapter. I'm sure they will at some point. But the point is a lot of packages and a lot of companies and a lot of services are not gonna have built-in native support for Svelte. So that means that you're gonna to have to do a lot more rolling of your own stuff, but I don't inherently think that's a bad thing. We'll be talking about that soon in an upcoming video. 
video where I'm going to be custom rolling some authentication on Golang. And I think I've changed my mind on that. I think custom rolling your auth might not be that bad of an idea. And I think it's a lot easier than I really thought it was. So we'll talk about that soon. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.